Welcome to The Calculus, a collection of micro lectures, video lessons, and sample exercises. Let's evaluate the limit of the given function. Let's have this next um, expression here. Let's say the limit of a more complicated example. Let's say x plus 1 or the square of x plus 1 times x minus 1 over. You will have here x cubed plus 1 as x approaches to negative of 1. Okay, so this is a little bit a lot, but of course, this is to illustrate the result using the limit theorems. If you're going to try the limit of your denominator alone, x cubed plus 1, as x approaches negative 1, you will have this form. The cube of negative 1 plus 1, which is negative 1 plus 1, you will get here 0. Okay, so if it's 0 now, what happens here is that we could be expecting a limit that will not exist because we have a denominator of zero. However, if you're going to examine as well, the, num the numerator, the square of x plus one x mi times x minus one as x approaches negative one. Of course, you could apply here the concept of a power and a product. But when you look at the substitution, you have negative one plus one, the square of that, negative one minus one. Even if this is not zero, this is zero, right? Zero squared times negative two, this will give us zero as well. So we will have here another indeterminate form, zero over zero, to which again, for the concept at hand, it's not part of the coverage. So what we need to do here is to implement certain steps, if we can, in such a way that we will not be achieving this. It's even okay to even have a certain constant here over zero because we will have a limit that doesn't exist or a limit at infin infinite, uh, probably infinite, if it is an answer but if it's zero over zero that's in a determinate form so there'll be another steps for that just this time we will not be accepting here what we could do is to probably look into this and factor all of the parts of numerator and denominator so our numerator we can separate x plus one x plus one x minus one right our denominator would be x cubed plus one but it's still 0 over 0 because when you substitute here negative 1, that's just 0 still. What we could do is to uh, actually factor our um, denominator. Our denominator is a um, the sum of two cubes. x cubed is a perfect cube. 1 is also a perfect cube. If you can still remember, the factor okay, of x cubed plus 1 can be broken into this, a binomial expression, x plus 1, the cube of the first term, the cube of the second term, and the sign here as positive, times, we have here the square of the first term, the square of the last term, and simply multiply the two. So plus 1x, or simply x plus 1. That is how we factor our uh, sum, of, uh, sum of two cubes. Oh, sorry, it's not plus, by the way. I forgot, this should be minus here. Okay, such that if we have 1 times x, negative x, one, x times 1 is 1, I am in x, so that it will be cancelling out. And then 1 times x squared is positive x squared, x times negative x, negative x, so they will be cancelling out as well. So these are the factors. Now let's use this for our function here. x plus 1, x plus 1, x minus 1 over x plus 1 times x squared minus x plus 1. So we can cancel this now, okay? What happens to our uh, actual form now will be like this, okay? So we'll have this expression now. The limit of x plus 1, x minus 1 over x squared minus x plus 1 as x approaches to negative 1. We would still see a 0 in our numerator because that's negative 1 plus 1, negative 1 minus 1, right? Our denominator will be the square of negative 1 minus negative 1 plus 1 so that's 0 times negative 2 that's 1 plus 1 plus 1 so 0 over 3 which is just equal to 0 so the limit of the entire expression earlier is just equal to 0 it's not 0 over 0 because we're able to remove the possibility of having 0 in our denominator even if our numerator is 0 it's still a real number which is equal to 
zero. So we don't have this anymore. So our limit is now a real number. So that's how you examine the possibility of having a limit or even if uh, denominator is zero as long as the numerator is not. In this case, numerator is zero, sorry, numerator is zero, but the denominator is a real number. Hence, we have a real number of zero here. So what are you waiting for? Subscribe now!